A very good morning to you all and a warm welcome to Deepwater Baptist Church Online. Last week, Norman spoke to us about some of the words and phrases that have become part of our everyday vocabulary during the coronavirus pandemic. Last week, Norman spoke to us about the word shielding and some of the references in the Bible to shielding. This week, I want to look at another phrase that's become very familiar to us during the coronavirus pandemic social distancing. I'm sure we've all become familiar with social distancing now. As you walk down the high street there are signs on the pavement reminding us to keep our distance from others. In the supermarket it's announced over the tannoy to remember to keep your distance. And of course social distancing is one of the government's key measures to prevent this virus from spreading. And it's right that we observe social distancing as much as we possibly can. And as Christians, it's right that we do all that we can to protect others, especially the vulnerable. But as I walked down the street the other day, I passed by a sign on the pavement that says, keep your distance. I'm sure you've seen them, um, particularly if you live in Hayes and you've walked down the high street in Hayes, you'll have seen those signs on the pavement that say, keep your distance. It got me thinking, does God practice social distancing? I wonder what you think. Might sound like a very strange question to ask, but there's lots of people that I speak to who seem to have the impression that God keeps his distance from them, or perhaps that they're not good enough to be in God's presence, and they feel that God might say to them, keep your distance. But as I read my Bible, I think that God is not a God of distance, but a God of closeness. God longs to have a close relationship with us. And it grieves him. It grieves God when we are distant from him, just like it might grieve you at the moment that you have to keep distant from your grandchildren or from other relatives or friends. It's the same with God. It grieves his heart when he's distant from us. But there might be a good reason that people feel that God keeps his distance. Many faiths teach that you can only approach God from a distance. And in actual fact, even in the Christian faith, if you go back to the Old Testament times, the temple in Jerusalem had a place right in the inner part of the temple that was called the Holy of Holies. And it was said that this was the place where God dwelt. But the only person that was allowed in that place was the, the chief priest. And he was only allowed to go in once a year to offer prayers on behalf of the people. Separating the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple was a huge, thick curtain. The curtain served as a barrier between a holy God and a sinful people. It was a symbol, if you like, saying, keep your distance. But the temple was supposed to be a place of worship to God. And the word worship means to come close, not to keep your distance. So it seems it was always God's intention that people should have a close relationship with him. God wanted them to be close, not to be distant. And actually, if we look at the Old Testament, it's clear throughout the whole of the Old Testament, and in fact through the whole of Scripture, that God wants to be close. We start with the book of Genesis, and there you get um, God creating Adam and Eve, the first people to walk the earth. And God had a very close relationship with Adam and Eve. And in actual fact, there's reference there that indicates that God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. If we go a little further on, God was, with, God was with the Israelites as they escaped from Egypt. And God led them through the wilderness, through the desert, by a, with a, a pillar of cloud during the day. And at night they had a pillar of fire to follow. God was with them every step of the way. And Moses had the particular privilege of meeting with God in person. Almost face to face, as it were. The Psalms talk about God's closeness. 
Uh, Psalm 139, the psalmist says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. In the famous 23rd Psalm, David refers to God as his shepherd, always with him, always guiding him and protecting him throughout his life, wherever he goes, whatever situation he finds himself in. God does not want to be distant from us. He wants to be close. And the ultimate proof of this, of course, is that God himself came to live amongst us in the person of Jesus. God stepped into our shoes and walked amongst us as one of us. Staggering, isn't it, that the God of all creation would step into our shoes and walk amongst his creation as one of us. And Jesus talked a lot about having a close relationship with God. And ultimately, of course, Jesus died on the cross to enable us to have that close relationship with him. And when Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. It was said to be an unbreakable barrier. And yet, as Jesus died, it was torn from the very top to the very bottom. A clear sign that there was now no barrier between people and God. Access to God was available for everyone. But Jesus promised his disciples something even more amazing than this. Jesus said that through the Holy Spirit, he would be with them always, wherever they went. Not distant, but right by their side, every step of the way. And God wants to be close to you too. Whoever you are, whether you've been a Christian for years or whether you've never given God a second thought, God wants to be close to you today. And he invites you to come close to him. Right at the end of the Bible, in the very last book of the Bible, a book called Revelation, there's an amazing invitation from Jesus. Jesus says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Eating in the Bible times was a sign of fellowship and acceptance. It was a sign of relationship. So that's what Jesus is offering here. He's knocking on the door of your life and asking, will you open that door and invite him in to come and have a relationship with you? He's inviting you to be close to him. He's giving you the invitation for him to be close to you. So we may have to maintain social distancing from one another right now, but we don't need to be distant from God. James says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. God invites you to be close to him today. Will you open that door of your life and invite him in? I hope that you'll consider it and experience the closeness of God with you day by day. God longs to be close to you. That's his invitation for you today. So I pray that you will know the closeness of God with you. He's not a distant God. He's closer than you think. I pray that you would know that today. May God bless you all. Amen.